Catacetinae. So much fun to grow, and when in full active growth during conditions that are perfect for them, the last thing we expect is pseudobulbs going yellow, especially seeing as they are getting watered and fertilized constantly while in active growth. Or are they? Could the lack of one of these two factors cause the decline of what once was a healthy pseudobulb? A question from at Ferrum inspired me to make this video to clear up any concerns anyone may have if they see their catacetinae bulbs going yellow. I have an example of that with my after dark black pearl, so I'm taking this opportunity to do a show and tell and explain my approach when I see something like this happening, how I handle it or don't handle it, and why I make my decisions accordingly. Seeing as this is the time of year that both hemispheres in the world have ongoings with Acatacetinae, Southern Hemisphere has new growth starting and the Northern Hemisphere has growth maturing. This video is relevant no matter where you grow your orchids or how. I hope that if you see anything yellowing on your pseudobulbs that this video will help you troubleshoot what is going on and that you can make a calculated decision with peace of mind as a result. As mentioned, my After Dark has a yellowing pseudobulb. This is the first time this orchid has done this since it arrived in my collection. Even after having divided it radically, that did not result in pseudobulbs going yellow during the growing season after their division. But here we are, two seasons later. Am I concerned? Not at all. First of all, there is no threat to the orchid if, in all the following reasons that I'm going to mention, we are talking about the oldest bulbs of the orchid. Take a moment to like the video. Thank you. Hint, hint. One reason for your pseudobulb turning yellow is age. So in order for you to assess if there's a threat with a yellowing pseudobulb, first look at where the yellowing is starting from. As you can see, the yellowing on my bulb started at the top and is moving down. That is a classic example of an older structure becoming obsolete and dying back. In this instance, the bulb feels firm, not that much softer than what the other still green bulbs feel like. It does not leave any indentations in the outer shell when it is squeezed. Seeing it decline and discoloring from top to bottom, no worries. Thank you for your service. Pseudobulb, ya grew well. If you see this dynamic happening with your catacetum, then you too can have peace of mind. Leave it to die back completely. There's no need to cut anything back. The risk of cutting this back at this point in time for aesthetic reasons is high. It would create a wound that previously wasn't there. Bacteria have easier access to cells breaking down and might just have a field trip causing issues which at this point in time are clearly non-existent. The next reason for a bulb yellowing can be somehow the bulb was damaged. So. If the discoloring starts from the base and works its way up the bulb, then that is a problem. Same as if the discoloring starts anywhere else along the structure and looks to be spreading from a central point in all directions. That is where something is going on which needs to be investigated. There was some kind of wound created, maybe some pest or previous repot. As an example, I have long nails. I have to be careful not to puncture my pseudobulbs or in any way bruise them on any of my orchids. And while catacetinae bulbs look tough as nails, they are not, pun intended. <laughs> they can be bruised easily and the surface can be punctured surprisingly easily. These kinds of mechanical damage will allow pathogens to enter the structure and while we are in the process of watering consistently, many times also spraying the leaves down to keep the excessive happy sap in check, there is a lot of moisture around the structures of the orchid which could cause bacteria to enter and rot to set in. If this is something you are noticing with your bulb, then by all means get rid of the bulb and make sure that you seal the wound with any kind of desiccating agent like cinnamon or any other antibacterial substance that you prefer to stop the spread into the next structures. In the case of yellowing, radiating out from somewhere along the bulb, not meaning at the top or the bottom, but somewhere central, then it is possible to save the bulb if you were to puncture the yellowing area with a sharp implement and see how far the tissue has discolored. In many cases, the bulb cannot be saved because the spread is pretty fast and we would need to find healthy tissue before applying any cinnamon or similar. I would call it a loss and remove the bulb right at the rhizome just to be on the safe side. 
Another reason that we can lose the bulbs is because the orchid is weakened and does not have the energy to grow a new growth without taking all that is left in reserve. If the orchid is large and has several bulbs to work with, then it is nothing that causes alarm. But if it is the one bulb with a new growth growing, it is going to be near to impossible to save the orchid unless there are established roots already in the pot. Unfortunately, as invincible as catacetinae look, they are quite delicate. Even though we can throw water and fertilizer at them without too many concerns while they are maturing their bulbs, one small thing can go awry and we are struggling to not lose our orchid entirely. Now, water and nutrient deficiency will also cause a bulb to yellow because the nutrients stored in that bulb are required at the front end of the orchid where it is actively growing. If you feel as though your orchid is dry every time you go to water it while in active growth, chances are it needs more water than you are giving it. And with that, not getting enough water, it cannot cope to support the new growth without absorbing a structure in the back. These are the main and most common reasons why bulbs will turn yellow. But there are other factors like excessive sun exposure, but hopefully we can spot that relatively quickly and pull the orchid back to protect it from getting cooked. Because that is what is actually happening within a pseudobulb that is exposed to direct sun for a considerable length of time. There is so much water stored in and among the fibers that make up the bulb. If left out in the sun, despite these orchids being sun-loving orchids, if left out in the sun, the water within the bulbs will heat up and the bulbs will cook from within. The burn will only be visible once the scar tissue forms or evident when we touch the structure. If we got to the situation in time, you will see like a yellowing blemish, but it's not expanding. But if the exposure to the heat was too long, then the decline of the cells will start from within and your clue why that bulb is going yellow will be because of the exterior burn mark, which will go brown and harden off. More often than not, depending on the size of your catacetum, that bulb will decline and not recover. Be careful with your smaller catacetinase, not just the seedlings, but there are catacetinase that do not grow to such a monstrous size as my two examples. But the smaller ones are the most prone to loss of structure because of sunburn than the larger ones. Thank you so much for still being here. I appreciate your time and hope that this video is proving useful and insightful. As we were on the subject of yellowing pseudobulbs, let's take a closer look at my after dark black pearl example. My pseudobulb is at the back of the orchid. I still have more bulbs at the front, plus the amazing bulb of 2023, which is currently maturing. What is new this year is that none of my previous year's bulbs plumped up again while this year's growth was growing. This is the first time I'm seeing my bulbs shriveled and not recovered even after watering began in earnest. Now, I currently do not have an explanation for that. The jury is still out, but when I have had time to see what she does during the winter, if the bulbs shrivel while she's trying to form spikes, then I will make a decision about letting her bloom or not. Because you can see that the yellowing of the bulb has a new growth starting at the base. And that is a first for me as well with this orchid. I have not had this orchid attempt a new growth this late in the season or early depending on which side of the fence you are on. But the decline of my bulb is because the energy was needed at the front. Even though I provided for my orchid religiously throughout the season, the shriveled bulbs before this one clearly needed help in order to support what is going on at the front. And what is going on at the front is beyond amazing. What this new growth is going to achieve before the bulb dies back completely, and I mean dry as a doornail dry back, we shall see. It is certainly interesting to watch this new behavior and I will keep you posted. So if you're not subscribed, now would be a good time to do so. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And also, the next bulb along is also starting to show signs of decline from top to bottom. So, still not concerned, but I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for the health and welfare of my orchid. And if the remaining structures are the only ones I have left, then we will forfeit the blooms of my after dark black pearl. But the health and welfare of the entire orchid is paramount as opposed to us needing the blooms. 
I briefly mentioned the possibility of me not letting my after dark bloom and the reason is I am all about protecting the integrity of the bulbs that are still green. This orchid grows spikes with 20 plus blooms on each spike and yes it pushes two spikes out from me each year during a period where there is no fertilizer and very limited access to water. That is an exponential amount of energy that is being pulled from the remaining bulbs and seeing as my other bulbs never plumped up I'm not going to put them at risk just because I cannot get enough of this orchid's blooms. So, guarding the integrity of the structures to ensure the future health and strength of these orchids is paramount. As you can see, my orchid glade Jack of Diamonds is in the process of growing a wonderful spike that looks different, shall we say? Well, we are going to have ourselves some Betty Boo Beep female blooms coming soon. I will feature those in a separate video, so make sure that you're not only subscribed to the channel, but also have your notification bell set to all, so that you will get notified when that video airs. I have not had female blooms in two years, because to protect the integrity of my orchid clay jack of diamonds, last season I cut the spike off the female blooms, but the orchid is doing great this year, so woohoo, Betty Boo Beep, bring it on. Your time is appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.